Okay, we're just going to go. Hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> hey there. Welcome to the nth degree. Donna and I were just starting a juicy conversation. I said, ooh, 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 let's hit record. Okay. And this time Berlin said it, so, you know. <laughs> Sometimes it's Donna. <laughs> yep, yep, exactly. Um, so, yeah, so let me set up the framework, and then we'll, and then we'll dive deeper. So, in our the the gathering that I've been going to since August, uh, you know, I if you know any of my story, listeners, the audience, you kind of know that I left the church and I have been doing uh, home groups, ecclesia groups. I lead my own ecclesia groups. So we've been pressing into deeper into the Lord, but outside of a church box, right? Well, in just this last August, I started attending a, a church. It's this very small gathering, and I love what the pastors are doing, and they're setting up great foundation for going into deeper with the Lord. And I've had several one-on-one -on -one conversations with them to, to you know, make sure, not, not like they need to please me, but just to know that I'm on the right track and I'm tracking with them. And, and, the, and, they're they're doing great but obviously they're doing a look going slower because they're pulling people who've never heard the stuff that donna and i talk about on the nth degree and i know the audience already knows a lot of the deep crazy stuff that we go into but so they're doing a great job setting up foundation so one of the pieces of the puzzle that they set down on sunday was the tying the two together, the, the Pharisees rejecting Jesus, and then Jesus telling the story of the, um, the wedding planner or person who's going to put on a wedding and the guests didn't come. And so he went out to the highways and the byways to search for guests. Right. And so Berlin sitting in my, my, my pew, you know, not, not, not my pew in my chair sitting there going, um, okay, so Lord, well, how does this apply to me? What I was thinking of was that there that the Christians have rejected spiritual technologies, and we'll explain that in a second. And so therefore, the Lord has revealed that to other people. And so then my question to the Lord is, oh, is that the new age? Was that, is that new age people? Is that why they're embracing technologies that access power from the heavenly realms, but they're not stepping into father's kingdom through Jesus as the only door. They're only going into second heaven to get power from there. And so that is my question before the Lord. That's what I just laid up to, to Donna. And she says, <laughs> I said, well, in that it's true that, well, first of all, um, bless your pastors and the ecclesia that meets with them. Yeah. Because that they're doing a hard thing in yeah. that they are beckoning their um, the humans surrounding them. They're beckoning them into the kingdom of, of Yahweh through Jesus. They are also walking them baby step toe by toe into a paradigm shift. Right. And it takes a long time to turn a big ship and a paradigm shift is a very, it's doable because of the neuroplasticity of our brain, but a paradigm shift is um, something you have to steward. And so that's what they're doing. Bravo for that. Great job. Yeah. And grounding everything out in biblical, uh, uh, uh -huh. um, you know, story. I think, I think any gathered group in the name of Jesus is an ecclesia in my view. Some ecclesias are more soul oriented than others. Um, some ecclesias have a calling to be very spirit oriented. Some ecclesias have a very have a calling to be very um, like the deacons ministering to the physical needs. And I so, you know, whereas I went through a season where I was kind of down on what we call the traditional church and I'm a little more graceful toward them now in my thought pattern. Yeah. Um, however, I also have given myself permission to follow that portion of the Ecclesia that I think the Holy Spirit is leading me in. And so it has helped me be a little more graceful. But anyway, back yeah. to the passage, I also said this, that um, that passage, I love how the living word of God can, the facets of his living word can be interpreted and can mean, and you can see things through them in many different ways. So there's not just one answer about what does this mean? Right. And that is a departure for me 
because I was I was raised and taught in the church one interpretation for a Bible passage and you had to get it right. And it was very legalistic and it was very in a small box and a frame and you can't get out of this. And, Oh, you're going to get into something if you do. Yeah. Right? So, so I came out of that and I'm a lot more freer. Now I, I sometimes will admit to the audience that I'm not even as free on the fringe as Berlin is. <laughs> yet, it's only, it's, it's only, I was taught the same way you were, but I was just probably more <laughs> rebellious. <laughs> like, ah, oh, screw that. <laughs> I'm a lot more freer. And I think my, I would say my soul is more at peace. I'm a lot more because my soul is at peace because I know the identity of my being. Right. I'm a lot more willing to, um, to let the Lord lead and to, and to be aware of this, what my spirit is being. Um, and beckoned into, invited into. Mm -hmm. Okay, all that, but I didn't say what I probably wanted to say. You were saying about, <laughs> ah. you were saying about that passage about, oh, oh, what this would be a good place to stop. And you define what you mean by spiritual technologies. Sure. So, so the spiritual technologies that I was thinking of was, was, aligning our inner world, our inner, our spiritual senses with what God is doing. So opening our spiritual eyes, the eyes of our heart is the way that, that uh, Paul says it, opening our spiritual ears, you know, those who have ears to hear the, the deeper meaning, those, those kinds of things. And we actually have all the spiritual senses. We can, we can perceive things by touch or touch, taste, and smell, as well as just hearing and seeing. And then I am more of a perceiver. Now, if you've watched any other um, episodes, we've we've talked about that perceiving or that just knowing piece, right? So it's almost like we have that sixth spiritual sense. So it's not, it's using those senses. This is the technology that I was specifically talking about, using those senses to go see what Father's doing, go see what's going on in the, in the heavenly realms. Now, a lot of people accidentally see um, the demonic, like the dark stuff that's going on around them. But I think that we're called to rule and reign, and therefore we're called to see what God is doing rather than what the enemy is doing. Now, we need to know what the enemy is doing to not be um, you know, ignorant of his schemes, is what the, the Bible says. We need to know what he's up to so we can come against it. But we also need to be able to understand what the the Lord of heavenly hosts, Jehovah Sabaoth, is doing and, and what those heavenly hosts are doing under his command. Because if we're called to rule and reign, then we need to be able to, to understand that. So it's that technology of stepping into the heavenly realm, see what's going on, mm -hmm. and then using um, our our connection with the Lord to say, what do you want me to do about this? Now that I'm seeing this, I'm you're showing me this, what do you want me to do about this? So that's the technology specifically that I meant in that. I in think. Okay. I think it throws people sometimes when we use the word technology, spiritual technology, because it's an, uh, it's an element of the unseen and spiritual senses always made much more sense to me because <laughs> I was introduced to them by Holy spirit. And so technology has always felt like a foreign word because technology to me feels like, let me get through this thought feels like a physical tech, like, the, the the people over you know doing software and the people building the computer and the and that uh -huh. always felt like physical world until until caveat drum roll please uh, <laughs> until I began to realize that spiritual beings actually do have spiritual what we would call technology which is it it it's a it's a it's a system they employ to do a thing. Right. And then here was my big aha that those spiritual technologies can actually be seen in the Bible. Right. <laughs> and so right. when I put all that together, I was like, oh, this is what they're calling spiritual technologies. So yeah. let me just There's a lot more to it than what I explained. So you're hitting it. You're you're going doing going an umbrella in and, okay, I, okay. Yeah. and maybe our audience needs that. Um, I think sometimes our language is our, our biggest problem because we're trying to get shoulder to shoulder with Christians who are also desiring to kind of tease out the fringe here mm -hmm. and, and to, and to receive from Holy Spirit 
what what they're needing to do. But anyway, right. um, so I just want to say this: Where do you see it in Scripture? Where do you see Where do you see this in Scripture? Um, I have two thoughts going on in my brain. I'm like, okay, which one am I going to follow here? <laughs> Holy Spirit, which where are we going? Um, so the Tower of Babel. And if you go back and read in Genesis, all about, I think that's chapter 11, all about Tower of Babel. That is your, what are you looking at? You're looking at probably a group of people who are seeking the unseen. They're seeking power. They're seeking to become gods, that big lie that Satan kicked off with Adam and Eve. And so when you're look when you're looking at the Tower of Babel, you're looking at what historians or archaeologists would call a ziggurat. What mm -hmm. is that? It is a place in physical earth that is actually a spiritual technology. Mm -hmm. And it's ancient. I think the Great Pyramid is the same. And all the pyramids, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And there's hundreds uh, 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 all over the globe right. on, the, on the land and under the water and under the sea exactly the water, yeah so uh, and so what are they what uh, what is that to me it's that human unredeemed human that um is probably a mixture from nephilim right and is really looking f to make their own kingdom and so in order to do that they're, they're they are They've fallen for the lie of Satan that they need something from a unseen dimension. And so they're hunting after it. They're looking for a trade with it. Right. And this is what Satan got in trouble for in the beginning, got kicked him out because he would he profaned his trade. And so what was his trade? His trade was to glorify God. And instead he lusted after his own glory, you know, and it got him kicked out of heaven. Right. Right. So so another word for technologies might be mechanics like it's just I was just talking it's the way something works the like that, that mm -hmm. yeah the way that the Lord designed the spirit realm to interact with the physical realm we our bodies are a technology we are literally a portal we are a device that says we are his hands and feet like we can do the doing mm -hmm. on this in this physical plane mm -hmm. based on the spiritual direction that we get from God right do his and scripture says that right exactly when we do his will on earth and create on earth as it is in heaven that's then we're fulfilling that mandate using the technology or the mechanics of our body and also our voice and it talks so many times in the bible that says when you speak a thing it will happen right so this is a technology we're literally using our the the physical part of our mouth to release a frequency and a voice that has our unique voice print that comes from the spiritual realm because the lord is putting a thought into our head to do a thing right that's all quantum and then we think the thought oh i should do a thing right so that's all it's quantum it doesn't really exist you can't find that thought in my head anywhere in the physical in my brain anywhere right until we speak it out and that's a spiritual technology to release the frequency of that so that's just another way to look at what a spiritual technology is is like how does something get done what are the mechanics of that and, you know, the more you let your mind kind of uh, filter out any, like, talk to the hand moment that you have, <laughs> spiritual technology, you, Holy Spirit begins to show it to you in scripture, a spiritual mechanism. I like that word, a spiritual mm -hmm. technology. It's a right. spiritual system. Okay. Now mm -hmm. we're, we're told not to plug into the Babylon system. Right. right. But that exactly. that's evil and unrighteousness in the kingdom of Jesus. We have right hit not our righteousness, but we have his righteousness. He's freely given our righteousness that we might do this, be the connection by our spirit man between heaven and earth. So that yeah. verse ancient um, lift up ye ancient gates. That's mm -hmm. the ancient gates are is the image of God on earth, the physical created image of God that you and I represent yep. and our, and our generations. Now, some of our generations fell into iniquity, fell into the ditch mm -hmm. Jesus came that we might be redeemed 
and no longer have a debt to Satan. Mm -hmm. And, and so as a free person, then I'm free to explore in through Jesus, what father is um, wanting me, wanting me to do while I'm here in, in this season of my life. I think I'm so glad that you said that because that is one of their source texts as far as lift up your heads. Oh, you gates gates. talking about us being the gates because he's talking, you know, he, uh, our, our pastor, both, both the husband and the wife are our pastors and, and he just happened to be this last uh, week. So that's why I'm saying he, um, but they're talking about, you have to swing wide your gate. You have to open your heart to have, to allow the glory to come from heaven into earth. I'm like, oh my gosh, he is so setting the foundation for opening up your spiritual technologies, all of your spiritual senses to engage, like to activate, to go for it. Right. There's a verse. (laughs) That's so good, Berlin. There's, there's a, there's a verse in scripture that I just, you can pass by it and never read it. And when God slowed me down and go, "Mm -hmm, what about that? I was like, (laughs) (laughs) right. You know, wow. So it's, it's where Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and he, he very pointedly says to them, you Pharisees and you high priest. Okay. So the priesthood, the Levitical priesthood who were supposed to be ministering to God and on behalf of the people. He says to them, you locked them out. Yes. In other words, you kept the people, the, just just think how Satan has infiltrated that. He, Satan had to do it, right? He had to infiltrate one tribe. Why not the Levitical tribe? But, and you can read in scripture where they continually fell in the ditch. They just didn't get it. They who had so much, too much whom is given, much is expected. They had so much, and yet they kept the people out. In other words, I think Jesus was saying, I'm showing up to do a lot of things, but one of the things I'm doing is to reopen and re-enliven, reactivate the spirit man that you guys were supposed to help the people understand all this is. And I think the priesthood knew it. I think the priesthood understood the spiritual supernatural. I think so too. I think so too. I think that they were the ones that were dabbling in the Kabbalah, the, the, maybe not even dabbling, maybe they were good at it. And the, in the Jewish mysticism and that, you know, the, the Lord all the way through the old Testament says, stay away, stop doing it and all of that stuff. But that's what the watchers came down in Genesis six and taught the people how to use those technologies that they shouldn't have been able to use, right? Yeah. And I think that those Pharisees knew how to do that. And I think, I yeah, they were shutting that down, just and like the, the down. church didn't even allow people to read the Bible because they didn't want them to yeah. know the truth. And 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 not being able to read the Bible, you wouldn't see, or you wouldn't you wouldn't begin to garner. Oh, and I think religious systems forever after that kept the people, you and me. Out Mm -hmm. of the realization of the supernatural part of our being. Yeah. Don, I I just oh, finish your thought and then I'm. Well, I'm just saying the supernatural part of your being is the best part of you because it's most like the image of God. Right, (laughs) right, right. Most like it's most what you're supposed to be living from, not the soul realm. Although you can live in the soul realm that you don't, it's not simple to live from the soul realm, but is it the best and highest? And Jesus came that we might live abundantly. What was the essence of the abundance? It was that you are a spiritual son and daughter of Yahweh. You have ability to see like Jesus demonstrated what father is doing in that realm and to co-labor with him on earth or from earth. Yeah. In yeah. Spiritual places. So, so this is what I wanted to interject there because I realized that I, what I said, I want to make sure that it's very, very clear. When I say that the Pharisees knew the Jewish mysticism and the Kabbalah and they kept people from it, I want to um, make sure that you understand that I do not agree that we should be dabbling in Kabbalah and Jewish mysticism. What I'm saying is they've lumped all of the supernatural and the spiritual giftings all together Mm -hmm. and kept the people from knowing any of it. 
yes, they, they, it would have been their job to keep them. It says specifically the priest's job is to keep people from, to know the clean and the unclean, the, the, right. the righteous and the unrighteous Here in the end here. specifically. So, so the, it would have been the Pharisees correct, right. To keep the mysticism and the Kabbalah out and away from the other spiritual technologies that the Lord did mandate and did say. And that's another, that's where you get Gnosticism. Yeah. Yeah. Those yeah. who are seeking higher pathways of knowledge. Right. It's just, it's so multi-layered. We could talk about it for days, you know, I know. we're I just know. barely dusting the surface here. Yeah. And but I, I'm just, I, I'm, I was just so encouraged that um, it's almost like it's, bringing the mainstream in i mean this is what we were doing what seven eight years ago stepping out of mainstream church and i actually had stepped out of, of before that but into the deeper things and yes i do remember my journey and that mm -hmm. some of the things were so like uh oh i don't know if i'm supposed to be doing this and so it was on a shelf for a while <laughs> until until i felt like okay i have a yes from the lord okay next next you know next little bit but i do have that that streak of rebellion uh lord's still working on so i do <laughs> and I, gotta, I gotta interject this because... okay go ahead <laughs> Because you can even see that, I mean, well, I say even, of course, like, come on, Donna, you, you can see the supernatural in the Old Testament. Absolutely. You're taught, you're taught not to look for it. Right. Um, traditional church, let's say evil religious spirits have yeah. camped you down, patted you on the head and said, you just be a good little girl and bring your tithe and, and come to church every Sunday and you're good. Yeah. Repeat this after me kind of thing. But, but. Okay, I got off on a tangent. So, but the the um the supernatural in the Old Testament, like here here's a question to ask yourself: Is my church captured by a religious spirit? Hmm, have they ever talked about the supernatural in terms of who the giants are mm -hmm. in Genesis six? Mm -hmm. And how there there are things in your Bible and mine that do not make sense outside of the unseen spiritual powers, both good and evil. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I was just thinking about that. Jesus employed spiritual technologies that we have yet to step into. He walked through walls. He used the life and the he, he used a cloaking device to walk through a crowd and they didn't even see him. Yeah, he like, did. Him invisible or whatever, however that works, whatever. Yeah, however that works. He he seemed to be, be given permission in that moment to draw from a, a higher dimension, a greater no, dimensional number, which mm -hmm. you can manipulate a lower dimensional number if you if you're from a higher dimensional number. So right. by his spirit, he was able to do that. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's things that it says you will do what Jesus did and even more. But most people just say, okay, we're going to heal the sick, um, cure the what is raise the dead cast out demons. So people talk, focus on those three, right? But he did so much more. He multiplied food. You know, he bent yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Multiplied he, food. He, yeah, he walked he on water. He, uh, <laughs> I mean, there's there's stuff that's like, we just blows over our head because those are spiritual technologies that we don't understand how to operate yet. They're there, but we don't know how to, we don't know how to do it, right? Here's one thing that I, you know, I'm always pondering with the Lord about that, about spiritual technologies. The Lord is very gracious to us to make them available, but he also knows our frame, right? He knows our makeup. He knows yeah. the iniquity in our blood. He knows the unrepented for sins yet that we did in our life. He knows um, how much we trust him and how much we don't. He And yet he is faithful to call us into the highest best that we can be and that we're here for because we got we're, we're here for a time but as our eternal self goes on with Jesus after physical frame is no longer we still got dozens of things that we're going to be doing what is that that we're going to be doing we're going to be continuing in that I think the things that sort of connect to us and have played out here absolutely in, in, in this yeah. in this era yeah I, agree. I 
I don't know why I always get started saying something and then I'm off on another (laughs) tangent. I was going to say something else entirely. (laughs) Oh, welcome to the nth degree. That's all good. (laughs) Oh, I know what it was. It was that God trusts my immaturity, that I'm going to mature through my immaturity. Uh, This just boggles my mind. I talk to God a lot about this because your character in your soul and your spiritual immaturity. they, they need growing up, right? You grow up in the natural. You were meant to grow up in the spiritual and, and spiritual technologies too soon. Might, might, we might we mess that up, right? We, we is, will destroy ourselves. Right. This yeah. is why I think, I think we have the restrainer on earth yep. to, to restrain humanity from that. Praise Jesus. Um, I think it's also why we're meant to do it together. Um, we're two or more gathered in his name as an ecclesia. That's a good point. Um, I, because we, we grow that way Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. And and why we, we have some ahead of us. We're not all in the same timeline. You know, we have some that have gone ahead and they're matured in their generation, but they're still here. Mm -hmm. And there's some, they're like, they're trying to leave a legacy Mm -hmm. for those that are coming. Mm-hmm. as we build on each other's shoulders. I mean, just there's a lot. I of- think and I think the most important thing or the reason or the 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 place where we need to have our focus is in intimacy with him and understanding who he is, who we are and having that relationship with him. Because that is what matures us to the point of you see these shiny objects and you know, I'm not ready to handle that yet. Whereas if you haven't spent time with him, you're like, oh, look at that. Let's go. Which, which I have done in like realm. Everybody can fall into that pitfall, right? I, I, right. Exactly. You try to be your Christian spiritual self without intimacy with the one who brought it to you. (laughs) <laughs> it's like, hmm, that just really doesn't even make logical sense. But but I think people do, and this is where the occult is ready to snatch them. Right. So the occult is ready to go, I'm the shiny object, come over here. And and many do fall into that. And by occult, I'm I'm seriously talking about witchcraft. I yeah, think right. uh, humans humans do operate in witchcraft. I think I think um I've heard of well, and I think it's true that if you're not, if, if, depending on where you are with your journey, as you walk with God, you're, you, ha- the, um, what do I want to say about this? I want to say it kindly, but I have, I've come across Christian witchcraft mm-hmm. and it's doing it outside of what Holy Spirit is leading. It's, it's doing anything spiritual outside of what Jesus is revealing. It's not waiting on him. It's running ahead. And when you put that label on that, whoa, let the fear of God settle down in your spirit so that it's a protection to you. That's why we have our spirit mingled with the sevenfold spirit of God. Well, and I think that people don't understand what that means. So let's just, let me just baby step that out. So witchcraft is manipulation. And so if you are drawing on a power, which we've talked, let's just say a spiritual technology of speaking it out. So now you want to manipulate a situation or manipulate a person by speaking out over them, Mm -hmm. your (laughs) will instead of father's will. Exactly. Yeah. You have to be, and this is where the character line is drawn. I think you have to be super aware of where your motivator is and your heart and your mode and what's motivating your will versus Mm -hmm. father's will. Can you tell, can you, can you, because I think you can as a human in Christ know, wow, this right here, that, 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 these bullet points, that is so Donna's will. That is so Donna. But over here, da, 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 this is so Father's will in any given scenario. Right. And is it easy? Maybe not. Is it submission? Yeah. Is it humbling your soul? Yes. And then calling your faith that's in your spirit, man, forward to to perceive with God what you don't know. And I think a lot of times the best question is, Lord, what am I looking at? 
what am I looking at here? And we'll slow down and say, where are you in this scenario? That's interesting that you just said that because I literally had five, perhaps even more dreams where I woke up going, I'm going to need more information. I saw part of that and I think I understand it, but I don't really understand how that works out. What the heck was that? What are we doing here? So that this last night, it, it, I usually wake up with one or two that I act that, that I'm asking those kind of questions. But last night it was every single one was what? Yeah. So it was, an, and I don't understand. And and then it was a pressing in. Okay, Lord, if I need to know this, you're gonna have to bring it back to me. But I also need spirit of understanding to come along and give me some, not just the wisdom of what it is, but understand what it means and how to like what do I do with it? What what do I do with this? You know. So I yeah. yeah. The dream realm is so so interesting. Um, yeah, we we don't want to. Yeah, can we, can go but it's on. another. That's another spiritual technology, though, isn't it? It, it is. It is, and it's used by both sides of the spirit realm. And Absolutely. so that's another thing that you journey with your your character on your on your shoulder, going, "Lord, help me here," yeah. <laughs> as you learn the the technology. Okay, so a a spiritual technology is a spiritual warfare. It's the same thing. Spiritual warfare is a spiritual technology. Think that's about true. it. Yep. All we do is we put on the armor of God. You you see how you can say well, that's that's a form of technology, right? The, the armor is definitely a technology. Yeah. A breastplate of righteousness. That's that's the breastplate given to me because I'm in Jesus. It's right. his righteousness. It's infused with his righteousness. And it 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 it, it literally protects my organs. <laughs> I I there's so much like that. I think. And let me blow people's minds. Ready? One, two, three. The blood of Jesus is a spiritual technology. Oh, absolutely. 100%. It's a solvent. It's a, a refresher. It's, yeah, there's there's so much technology in that blood. Uh-huh. It's, a, it's a knowledge base. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a, um, it's a DNA washer. <laughs> it's a DNA cleanser. It's a DNA aligner. Yep. It's, um, it's, it's literally a sustenance. Mm-hmm. And so I, I feel like when you begin to realize, this is what I'm saying at it, spiritual technologies, um, we're, we're like, eh, we get all wrapped around our mind on that. But if you begin to ask Holy Spirit, connect the dots with this, what, what is a spiritual technology and what's available? Well, anything you use, just like a monkey using a stick to get ants out of the ground, right? That's a technology. And right. so in the spirit realm, I, we have access to that. Yeah. Um, and I think in the temple, uh, here's another, here's another thing in the temple of Jesus, in the temple of Jesus, not, I didn't mean to say it, in the temple of Yahweh, the mosaic temple, and then the temple that Solomon built, that was a spiritual, they were employing natural things that represented, or you could even say they didn't necessarily just represent, they were the essence or the, the fundamental physical essence, the physical realm essence of the spiritual technology. Think of the lampstand. Mm-hmm. They had the oil on the seven branch menorah in there, in the Holy of Holies, the showbread, the, the incense, all those are spiritual technologies. They are connecting right. the physical realm to the spiritual realm. Mm-hmm. And then you can do it illegally and, and, and with the occult. With mm-hmm. with all that, I don't even want to say it, all that stuff that they do. But the more you realize, oh, at one time, the spirit of humanity knew all this because we had not yet sinned. And Adam, we had not yet sinned. Mm-hmm. Wow. And then Jesus said, now watch this. Watch this, Satan. I'm about to reawaken their spirit and give them a gate and a door to come through to my kingdom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that you said that because all of those those instruments and tools and even the way that they built the built the Ark of the Covenant, everything was very precise and had to be a very specific way. Just think about when you build a tech piece of technology, it's got to function beautifully designed very specifically mm-hmm. for it to function the way it was intended to, right? The Ark of the Covenant, that had to be it. That's a spiritual 
you're looking at a spiritual technology manifested in the physical realm. Right. The Ark of Noah was the same thing. It was a right. spiritual. Remember, he didn't get that from, oh, I think I'll build this like this. That didn't come from the natural realm. It came from the spirit realm. Right, right, exactly. And I think that we're awakening to our bodies being designed in very specific ways to be able to interact and do different things. I mean, we don't even, I as speak for myself, I don't even understand how things are, but we're start, starting to understand the heart is the portal, you know, the gateway between soul and spirit. And, you know, we're starting to understand some things, but but I mean, they have said the eyes are the windows to the soul for, is, is that in the Bible? I think that is, isn't it? Or is that just me? Yeah, I, there, going on about, yeah. that's okay. why you have an eye gate and you have to yeah, be eye gate, your eye gate. Right, right. Your eye gate, your gate, your heart gate. Um, yep. And your, um, one more thing about the temple is they covered it in gold. Like Solomon covered everything in gold for a reason. The or gold is, has a technol or has a frequency, frequency. Uh -huh. specific so that will that draws glory, that draws wealth, that draws abundance, that protects. So there, and it's used in literal in physical technology. Gold is a very unique metal, and it's a very unique um, element. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and. Um, silver as well in the mosaic yep. covenant the the things that held the uh curtain the curtain rod that held the yeah, curtain holes and the, the, yep. the holes and all that Rings. they were silver or they were covered with silver i think they were silver i think they were yeah can you imagine i mean we know i mean gosh just the thing you start looking at that and you you recognize the wealth you recognize the workmanship you welcome you recognize this did not begin in heaven Moses received that as a copy from what was already in the unseen and then he had to communicate it and then they had to do it and just it's it's mind-boggling and then to see all of history that God is bringing us to be the living stones of that temple and what does that mean and how do I fit and join with others as him with Jesus as a cornerstone right. well then the, then you have the uh, the apostolic where you realize the kingdom is actually built on the apostolic foundation and so as God reveals that and begins to let you in on that beauty right and that came out of heaven no man thought that up and then and then and it just keeps going and and I think there are some called to be on the on the the tip of the spear to, you know, to continue traveling along that trajectory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. And it's so exciting to be part of awakening the body of Christ to these new, well, not new, <laughs> to these spiritual technologies that have been covered up and that. Because under the dispensation of revelation that we're in right now, things are accelerating and we're seeing things in a new light. We're seeing things with a new, fresh eyes, with a new, fresh perspective, looking at things from God's view, looking at things from the view of sitting on our throne. I, we were joking, um, Jesus and I were joking the other night. Someone was saying, always look up, look up, look up. And Jesus said to me, well, if you fall off your throne, you can look up. But otherwise, if you're seated, just look to the left. <laughs> so so there's things that we see when we're seated on our throne in heaven that we have never seen before because we never took our seat we never took our seat of authority we never had the intimacy to even know about our seat of authority we were we were just uh children of god drinking the milk from the bottle instead of coming into maturing sons that he could trust with, okay, now you can sit on the throne. Now you can see things from this different perspective. Now you can see things as I see them. Yeah. You know? So it's an exciting time to be alive, Donna. I'm just, it is. just so dang exciting. It is. And I want to leave this as we kind of land our plane here. I want to leave our audience with this because I hear Holy Spirit saying, give them something that that will be, sustain them oh yeah a spiritual technology is in the bible where 
Yahweh says, taste and see Mm -hmm. that I am good. You have capability through Jesus, especially to taste him and to see that he is good. In order to see, you have to look. Yep. In order to taste, you have to put something in you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we bless your spirit and we bless you, your spirit to taste and see his and taste his goodness, taste of his goodness, to see his goodness. And we bless you. And I'm going to say, go ahead and use the the technology of communion. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and use that. When you, when you taste, when you put Christ's body into you, ask him, what are, what am I putting into my DNA from your DNA? And what, what shift is taking place right now? What should I look for that there's a change happening? And then when you drink his blood, what does that represent? Like what are you, is his D is that his DNA flushing the impurities out of your DNA? Is it his blood literally washing out heavy metals and toxins and biosynthetics out of your body? What ask him what's going on right now? What it, what am I doing? What can I believe for that you're changing in me in my physical body because I'm doing this spiritual act and using this technology? of communion Mm -hmm. that's good yeah all right you guys this is a good one i loved it (laughs) thank you donna (laughs) all right you guys until next time take it to the nth degree don't hesitate to share this out with peeps don't hesitate to leave us comments um we we so appreciate your encouragement and your support and we bless you yes blessings Bye.